Team Part 3. Part 3, please. Please do Part 3. Part 3, please. These vids are so cool. I need Part 3. Part 3, Part 3, Part 3. We need Part 3. Part three. I crave Part 3. Part 3, we need all the characters. I can't believe I'm doing this again. Hey guys, I'm Drago, and my god, you really wanted that part 3, didn't you? <laughs> yep, we're back for even more redesigns of Guardians of the Bam Bam characters. Please save me. You know what to do. If you want that part 4, leave a like, maybe comment. Let me know what characters you'd like to see me do. But there's not much to say, really. Guardians of the Bam Bam part 3. Uh... So this time around, there were three characters that were highly requested. The most requested character is at the end, so stay tuned. But we're starting off with the grumpy frog himself, Sheriff Toadster. I didn't have much of an idea for this guy, so I just kind of went for this chubby, friendly looking dude who, you know, town sheriff and all that. I googled sort of American sheriff uniform. He gives me sort of deep south vibes. I don't know, I'm British. This is this is too American for my British mind to understand. <laughs> but yeah, general idea was sort of a chubbier guy, really friendly, nice big smile, big guys, the sheriff uniform, stuff like that. Is it when I sort of ended up making him a little bit too realistic? Like those frog's legs were too like normal frog's legs, like it, it ended up a bit creepy. <laughs> and I was like, this is the cartoon form, the cartoon form isn't the creepy one. So I erased the entire body that I'd done so far and just went for it again. I also was going to add a throat sack because, you know, toads sort of can inflate their throats, but again, it didn't really fit the cartoon sort of style of it, so I got rid of it. Also, if I sound off, I'm still ill, by the way, so <laughs> apologies for that. The little stuff badge I decided to put an emblem of Ban Ban on there to start off with. If you remember back to the Jumbo Josh design, his uh, high school sport jacket thing, I put a little sort of emblem of Ban Ban on there to show like Ban Ban high school, Ban Ban kindergarten, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. But I decided to not do that on this one because Sheriff Toaster isn't to do with the school, he's sort of more to do with, um, what's her name, Queen Bounce Celia, if that's how you say it, I don't know. You know, he sort of serves under her rule, you know, he's sort of her sheriff. So I thought it'd probably make more sense to put an emblem of Queen Bounce about Celia on there rather than Bad Man. Also, I had him more sketched out, it was onto lines. As usual for the cartoon style, I went for a thicker line art. Gives it a bit more of a bold sort of jolly vibe to it. You know, you see an outline and you think cartoon, it's the cartoon thing. So make sure that outline is visible and bold and, you know, really exaggerated is quite important, I think, to get this cartoon style. And I'll be 100% honest with you guys, I was so scared to do this design though. Because I wanted to make him a bit of a bigger character, a bit chubbier. I was so scared that I'd get the sort of people that are really weird about that sort of thing. You know, the people that sort of, like, like, uh, I can't say it because YouTube will definitely demonetize me. But that, I, I don't think I need to say any more unless you have a really innocent mind. And if you have a really innocent mind, then don't Google it. Please don't Google it. But anyways, in the end, I decided that I should just be able to make the design that I want to make that I feel fits the character. So yeah, I just went for it. As for his color, I went for basically his normal color palette, just a bit brighter. You know, cartoons have brighter, more saturated colors. Well, not all cartoons, but especially sort of kids' cartoons do. And that's sort of, you know, what I'm going for with this is to be you know, oriented towards children. So yeah, I definitely went for the uh, sort of more brighter saturated colours. As for the sheriff uniform, I just went for the colours the reference had, that's sort of the colours I had in mind. So, you know, the sort of beige uh, jacket and white undertop, stuff like that. I made the hat brown though to match the in-game version because it was a different kind of hat that the reference had. Unlike the rest of the cartoon characters who had white eyes, you know, the classic sort of white eye with a black pupil. I gave Sheriff Toaster uh, yellow eyes because it fits more into the toad aesthetic. And I feel like white eyes on him would have just been a bit boring. To further sort of make his design a bit more interesting, I also made the lighter pink go on his feet and his hands and around his eyes. Just has a bit more pizzazz to that design, you know? <laughs> 
In the cartoon version, Dan, it was time to move on to the monster version. Now, let me tell you, my art block lately has been so bad. You're going to see on all three of these characters that I do this video that I do so many sort of sketches that I then ditch and then do again and then ditch that and then do again. Like, I had the ideas in my mind, but they just weren't going down on paper. Or I should say monitor. I don't know. It's digital art, not paper. <laughs> but my general idea was that Sheriff Tozer, as far as I'm aware, is one of the rejects. He's got quite a sort of grumpy personality, quite, you know, stern. And yet he has this wide grin on his face all the time. So my idea was that he was meant to be this really happy, smiley, sheriff, friendly guy, but he came out with this more grumpy personality, you know, not with the friendly demeanour that they wanted. So they forced him to have this big toothy grin. And you'll see how I did that with some almost metal rods. But yeah, I thought they forced him to have this big grin to make him look more friendly. But in reality, it's just even scarier like that. So they ditched him, they rejected him, they threw him down the floors, whatever happens in Ban Ban, I don't know. This is going off rough memory of watching 8 but Ryan play it and editing it for Ghost Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I tried to go for this weird head design that I don't even know what I was doing here, honestly. I completely ditched it and I went, eventually went for a design that actually reminded me a little bit of, what's his name? Blowbox? Glowbox from R Rayman? You know this guy, the blue guy. As I was drawing it, it started to remind me of him, which I found quite funny. <laughs> I've not thought of that guy for ages until I started doing this. Anyways, I finally started to get the shape that I wanted. I went for a sort of hunchback pose and I made sure to exaggerate the sort of bulkiness of him. Like I said, he's sort of a chubby character, so yeah, I wanted to make sure that was in there. And I gave him sort of more frog-like legs because, you know, toad, frog, whatever. I wanted to make the smile really uncanny, so I went for the sort of slightly more realistic teeth. More so, I wanted to make sure the gums are on the show. Because if the gums are on the show, then it really exaggerates the fact that this smile has been forced, that his mouth has been stretched beyond what it should be, which is what these metal rods are doing that they installed within him, that they drilled into his skull and made it so they forced his mouth open in this wide smile. And when that didn't work, they got rid of him. I also went for this really bumpy texture for his skin. I don't know if any of you have ever like touched or held a toad, but they do have quite bumpy rough skin a lot of the time. So I wanted to lean into that more because, you know, Garton and Bam Bam make him quite sort of smooth. He looks really shiny, it's weird. But they make him look really smooth and honestly, toads aren't like that. So I thought I'd go for the bumpy skin to add a bit more realism and a bit more sort of uncanny creepy vibe to it. I'll tell you what, on my mind there is this type of toad that when it's sort of babies hatch like the tadpoles hatch they stay on holes on its back and then when they grow up into frogs the tiny frogs just crawl out the holes and it looks really horrible if you've got trypophobia which is that fear of holes and stuff don't google it because i don't even have trypophobia and it kind of creeps me out <laughs> but i almost went for that idea with him but then i thought it's not really his thin to have the babies you know that's more cream bounce earlier's thin isn't it with the naughty ones or whatever so i decided not to go with that idea for sheriff toaster i keep saying toaster toadster i, I don't know why that's so hard for me to say <laughs> but i decided not to go for that idea with him because it didn't really fit the narrative as usual for the monster form it was a thinner line art you know real life doesn't have lines so you go thinner to make it more realistic of course you can just paint no lines that's fine i don't do that because i'm really bad at that style <laughs> so i do tend to line but if it's a more realistic thing i will make the lines thinner Now what I always do for the monster version color palettes is I take the original palette and I basically just really dull it and desaturate it. Now of course real life and nature do have bright vibrant colors. I think it's called aposmatism. It's basically when an animal or plant has these really really bright vibrant colors and what that's basically saying is back off I am venomous or back off I am poisonous. Some animals even have this inner way to trick even if they're not venomous. The blue tongue skink is an example. It will flop out its big blue tongue. It's a really bright blue. It makes predators think that they are venomous or poisonous but in reality they're really not. It's just a defense mechanism. So yeah, Wild Nature does have that and it does work with some designs. With these designs, they're more about horror and uh, uncanny, you know? And therefore I like to dull the colors a bit. It gives this sort of almost a little bit of a dead vibe to them. You know, pale, dull skin and all that. It's almost like they're not fully alive. They are, but like they're on the edge, you know? And it's just a bit of sort of a creepy, uncanny feeling to it that it gives. And you know what? I am struggling to talk right now. Like the breathing is like, uh. <laughs> 
I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm like having to pause so much between like lines. It's like, ah. I know a lot of you are gonna say like, take a break if you're ill, but honestly, I just like getting the videos out for you guys. It's fun and I like seeing you guys enjoy it and have a good day. So yeah, even if I'm ill, I'll get the videos out. When shading, I use a block texture to really keep the idea of the bobbly rough skin. It saves me having to do those little, you know, lines to show the bumps all over him. I made sure to sort of put dark between the lines and light on the lines for the, you know, bumps, just to give them a bit of a 3D look. And I also painted his eyes in realistically. So you've got these wide bug eyes that look a bit dead, sort of staring at you. It's all quite a bit of an ironic design, really, because Sheriff Toto is actually quite a smart guy. He's one of the more intelligent ones. So to have this almost dead feeling to him is quite ironic, and it just adds to what is unsettling about him. Of course, finally, I did a couple of overlay layers just to add a bit more extra shade in, separate areas a bit more, and then he was done. Keeping with the theme of chapter four, I think, I don't know. But keeping with that theme of whatever chapter these guys are from, I went with Queen Bowsenia next. Honestly, she was a pretty easy one to do for the cartoon form. It was just draw a stylized kangaroo with some exaggerated features, like a bigger eye and stuff, bigger, softer nose, you know, a bit more upright and uh, give her a crown and a cloak. And there you go, Queen Bowsenia. <laughs> I know you guys said on like the Jumbo Josh design, oh, he's not just a gorilla. You can't just make him a gorilla. I'm sorry, but Cream Bouncelia is just a kangaroo. They're, they're, that's what she is. She's a kangaroo. Like, I don't know what else you want to do with this girl because that's what she is. <laughs> Really, the big part of her design is her pouch and what's inside her pouch. Now, I decided not to incorporate that into her cartoon design because I have a feeling that that sort of was an unplanned thing with them. So if we're going back to this sort of idea that they made the creatures, the monsters, the physical things that are in the game chasing you, they made those based off of the cartoon forms, then it's unlikely that they would have deliberately had her pouch full of these creepy evil little leech things that, you know, go around and kill everyone. So I reckon that was sort of an unforeseen event that happened within the real world and therefore isn't included in her cartoon form. Why she decided to do the do with this thing, I don't know. It's really weird. I feel like the devs have forgotten the whole original plot of trying to find a missing child at this point because I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> In terms of playing into her royalty, obviously nice bejeweled crown. I gave her a red royal cloak. You know, red is sort of considered a royal colour, so there you go. And I gave her a star. The star is obviously shown in the drawn version of her within the game. I don't know if her in-game sort of 3D version has it. I don't remember. But anyways, I gave her the star for the cartoon form. She was definitely probably the easiest cartoon form I've done so far. I used to do a lot of drawing of things like warrior cats and wolf fozies, you know, sort of thing you do when you're younger. <laughs> so this kind of animal style is more up my alley. It's more what I'm used to. So yeah, it really wasn't much for me to do this, honestly. It didn't take long at all. And I, don't, I think she turned out decent. In terms of her colouring, I did want to give a bit of a fur texture. So after doing the basic shading, I took Maul's colour brush and put it on a smaller size. And then I just sort of started to almost scribble it in. When doing things like fur, you could be quite loose with it. While there is a flow and direction to follow. Being loose gives it a bit more of a natural look. And it also do this all over our body just in some areas to give the idea of a fur texture. Usually in a cartoon this probably wouldn't be a thing that would be added but you'll see why I added it here when we get onto the monster form. There was this distinction that I needed to be able to make.
Now, the monster form for Queen Bouncelia, I had no idea what to do with her. Like I said before, she is a kangaroo. She's a purple kangaroo with a crown. Like, what do you do with that? So, knowing her whole trait is to have this pouch full of weird things that are gonna kill everyone, destroy the world, whatever, that was sort of the biggest design part to play into. That was where a lot of the horror is probably gonna come from. Oh, I feel like I can't breathe, help me! <laughs> so eventually, I got this pose that I thought I was happy with. I did all the sketch, I did all the lines, I coloured, I started shading. I got more colour brush, put it on a uh, stringy textures to do fur texturing. And then I had to stop for the day because I was busy doing other things. And I came back to it the next day and I looked at it and I realised this looks absolutely god awful. So what did I do? I deleted it. It's goodbye this cream Bouncedia weird furry thing. It's gone, it's deleted, and I started again. So this time I actually went on Google and got a reference of a kangaroo, which I probably should have done in the first place. And I basically just started sort of drawing a pose based on that reference. Like I said, I didn't have much of an idea for her, so it was more just leaning into the creepy pouch stuff. That sounds really weird. <laughs> so I made sure to have the pouch sort of dangling, like it's got lots in there and it's really heavy. My mum walked in while I was drawing this, right? And she said, either you're drawing a kangaroo or that's a sack. <laughs> so that's all I can see now, that it's a sack. <laughs> Anyways, it's a low hanging pouch because it's heavy, it's got lots in it. I wanted to make sure it was sort of open so you could see what was in it. And I sort of added these bumps to show that, you know, there are things in it, sort of, it's quite packed full. Now, Queen Balsalia, I think, is another sort of reject. I think that's why she's on the lower floors. So I decided to sort of give her flaws, you know, things that would be considered not part of beauty, not part of royalty. I hate saying that, everyone's beautiful how they are, everyone is beautiful in their own body. Um, but this is just in terms of the sort of the law and how the company probably would have been thinking. So she's got an overbite, she's got smaller dead eyes, and I also decided to make her hairless. So you can just see her wrinkly skin, you can see her bones. You know, a hairless kangaroo is quite a scary thing really i mean you see a hairless kangaroo and you're like what in the hell because they're not normally hairless so <laughs> definitely would creep the kids out i also gave her a sort of bent broken ear as well i just wanted to lean into the things that would have made her a reject and made the company toss her down to the lower floors i also exaggerated her spine and stuff made all the bones quite visible so when lining her you'll see there are a lot of extra lines i added these are detail lines that really show the idea of the wrinkly skin and get the idea that she is hairless doing details like that in your lines can save you a lot of time in texturing and it can really help exaggerate the idea that you're going for you know she started to remind me of was the roll rats from Ark Survival Evolved. These ugly little fellas that actually curl up and you can ride them and they just roll around and it's quite funny. I know I'm not doing much sort of commentary on the technical side of things but I've sort of said everything there is to say in the last two videos. I would just be repeating myself and it probably is going to get really boring. <laughs> Plus being ill means my brain is just not working. The singular brain cell that is in there that is usually bouncing around, that's completely still at the moment. It's on a standstill, it's frozen. There is just like that buffering symbol going around in my head right now. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just sort of more talking about the idea behind the character design and the choices I've made rather than the technical side of things because that's all been said already. And if you want to hear about all of that, then you can go back and watch the other two videos. I talk more about the technical side of things there, especially in the first video. So yeah, if you're interested in knowing my processes, then you can go watch those. But now I need to save my throat. <laughs>
Now, like I said before, the main horror of Queen Bansalia comes from her pouch and this sort of unknown of what's inside. So I decided to go into the having these sort of creepy eyes just sort of looking out. They're very simple. They're just a little bit of white with a black pupil. Very analog horror style, I guess. And then not a lot of people know this, but the inside of a kangaroo's pouch is not soft and comfortable. It is like raw flesh and it is full of mucus and stuff. So I really played into that with having the sort of drips of salivary mucus coming down. And I also added a little bit of red as well, like a little bit of almost strings of flesh and blood as well from where it's almost, it's so heavy that the pouch is ripped open now. And then I added the smoke effect to just add to it. I don't know, I just thought it looked cool. That's literally all I can tell you. <laughs> just their essence of evil leaking out of the pouch, I guess. <laughs> All right, here's the guy you have all been waiting for. The one, the only, Butterhole. Because that's what my phone's autocorrect called him. <laughs> Anyways, we're on to now the Queen's Jester Bitter Giggle. I'm sorry, but this guy is just a knockoff of the daycare attendant. You can't convince me otherwise. Like, I'm not accusing bad man devs of, like, outright copying, but, like, there is a lot of similarities there. <laughs> this two-sided jester with a really goofy voice. Having this good side that's regretful about what the bad side does. You know, it's just, it's quite similar, you know? <laughs> And being a FNAF fan, I can't help but think that way. Anyways, you guys have no idea how many times I like did this and then restarted it. I have like five deleted recordings in my so I can have been where I just completely ditched it because it was going awfully. Bitter Giggle himself took me four days just to do because like I couldn't get him right for some reason and I was in this massive art block and I was having a stressful week and I'm ill. The dish recordings I actually um, was going for this really sort of tragedy and comedy mask type face but it wasn't working and it was looking way too scary for a cartoon. So I went more like his original shape, but I kept the sort of whatever that bit is, the bit that comes out on the green side, I made that symmetrical on both sides. Because I honestly don't like the sort of spiky side that he has on the purple side. It's like some kid just scribbled, you know, like just on paper and they just asked a kid to design this guy and the kid just went scribble, 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 scribble on the paper and there you go. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I, I ditched that. I didn't like that. Honestly, there's not much of the original design of Bitter Giggle that I kept the same. The colours and the idea of the two sides, yes. But other than that, I started to lean into sort of quite a different idea. Well, not so much an idea, but just a different way of approaching it, a different way of executing it. And so here I gave him a proper jester costume because I'm pretty sure in game it said that he's a jester. I might be wrong, but I think he's supposed to be the queen's jester. But there's not really anything about him that shows that he's a jester, you know? So I really, really led into that idea. <laughs> At one point in the sketch, he starts to look a bit like a piece, which I found quite funny. <laughs> First we have Queen Bounce and his sack, and now we have a bit of giggle. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> For the cartoon version, I made the colours much more vibrant, which I explained at the start on why to do that. Now, first, I was going to do the sort of normal sort of colours for a Jessica costume. I was sort of thinking sort of darker blacks and greys and stuff with the highlights of the gold on the parts that, you know, go around the arms and the legs. But I thought a big part of Bitter Giggle's design is that he's split in two. And I think that needed to be really shown off quite well in both the clothing and the body. And so I basically just took the existing shades and made them a bit darker I guess a darker shade and that's what I had as a clothing. I did go a little different when I shaded this guy. Usually I just put the layers on the server opacity and just manually make the different shades and go for it that way but with how this guy has loads of different colours intersecting each other it's gonna be really hard to get it all to line up properly so I decided to use a shade and shine layer get some tones and shade them that way basically just all on the same layer going all over every part on the same layer and it just meant that the shadows and the highlights were more consistent throughout each part because if I say like on the head how to do the highlight on the purple part and then go do the highlight on the green part i would have to make sure that they line up perfectly so it looked like one continuous highlight on the shape of his head rather than two separate parts if that makes sense so just doing it on a general shade layer was way easier 
Now, you know how I said I had trouble with the cartoon form? Well, I also had massive trouble with the monster form. I had the idea in my head. I knew exactly what I wanted to do for this, but I just could not execute it very well. The idea that I had was his two halves are splitting, that there's almost just too much and they're sort of putting apart and splitting away, that maybe on sort of the good green side that he has lots of regrets and he's really not happy with what he's done. And the sort of worst purple side is still sort of those intrusive thoughts of wanting to do what he knows is not the right thing but still wanting to do it and this sort of conflict has caused the two sides to start splitting apart but oh my god i just could not get it right i don't think i've ever struggled with something so much like i don't understand how i could have the design so clear in my head but spend like a good hour just trying to do the base construction lines because it wasn't working in the end i sort of had to slightly change my idea so the idea i had was that it was really floppy and that the heads were weighing down the two halves that had come apart and were just literally almost upside down because they'd flopped over so much but that just wasn't working i could not get it to work so i had to have it be a bit more upright which i guess kind of works because if i think about the tension of the strings of flesh and stuff that are still holding them together the tension of that probably would keep them a bit more upright i actually knocked my microphone i'm so sorry <laughs> but yeah the tension of that would probably keep him a bit more upright so i guess it does make sense that he's not that floppy you know i still wasn't really happy with the construction lines but i just went into the sketch at this point to see if i can make it any better i said that i was going to do trashy and comedy in the cartoon version but that it was a bit too much so i decided to lean into it a bit more on the monster form you can see sort of the shape of the mouths are a bit more leaning towards what the comedy and tragedy mask look like to add a bit more to the horror i also made it so that the teeth are sort of jagged and pulled apart and almost loose and coming out there was a lot of sort of horror going on with this guy like i probably put a warning at the start because this guy is quite a bit of body horror so <laughs> i also gave him really really long really really skinny limbs he just gave me that long lanky vibe you know sometimes in character design there's not really much of an explanation as to why you do something it's just the vibe you get it's just what you feel fits and you can't always explain why you think that fits it just does so yeah there you go big lanky limbs it just fits it just fit the vibe the way i had sort of the arms behind the legs i could almost imagine this guy running towards you like a backward spider crawl almost and having the two halves swapping around as he runs towards you really quickly like this sort of messed up spider honestly i'm not too to my own horn here if this guy was in a horror game and he came running towards me like that with those two halves and the strings of flesh and stuff nope i'd be out that game would be closed i'd be gone no thanks <laughs> Now at first I wasn't going to lean into the sort of spikiness on his purple side but one of my friends suggested that maybe I could do it a bit more like a bone cancer look. If you don't know um it's actually quite horrific. When you get bone cancer your bones will sort of start to get this really weird foamy formation to them. I'm not a medical expert I don't know why it happens I've just seen the pictures. So I sort of went into that uh it's a bit you know creepier more uncanny uh the idea of bone cancer is quite a horrific thing so you know it just adds to the horror overall. I did the clothing in a lot more of a detailed manner obviously because it's more realistic so I made sure to put things like folds and stuff into the fabric of the shoulder pads and things. And as for the stringing flesh, well I just did it really loosely to start off with. This is the sort of thing that I couldn't be too methodical with because if I was then it would look too unnatural. So I was really loose with it just doing these strands. They're not connected yet, I will be doing that later on because I plan to do that on a separate layer. But I just sort of did the strands of you know the thicker parts that are stretching and coming off. I almost put teeth within the sort of inside of him as well. I wanted to do something similar to what I did for Nab Nab which was these rows of teeth but I thought it would just be way too busy at this point there was a lot going on in that area and I think it would just become a bit too unreadable if I did that so I decided not to in the end. Once again, I went for a much more dull, desaturated colours. For the clothing, rather than just making it a darker tone, on my colour picker, I went towards the grey side. So rather than it just being darker, it was instead just really desaturated. And I think it fit the vibe of this monster way better than if I were just to take the tones and make them darker in general. There's a lot of cleanup because of how the line art was. It was quite a messy line art, so I had to do a lot of the colouring cleanup manually. It took quite a while, but it was definitely important to do to make sure everything was properly separated. Because like I said, this is really busy design, so everything needs to be properly separated and visible. 
all. Before shading him, I put over a general texture of this sort of blotty texture. And then I used a shade and shine layer and did the same technique I did on the cartoon form for the same reasons. But this time I only did it on his skin, so only the parts of his actual body and not the clothing. This was because the tones of the shading didn't really fit everywhere. It was okay for his flesh, but it didn't really fit anything else. It made other parts a bit too saturated, which was going against everything that I wanted for this design. So while I did the shade and shine layer for the flesh, for the clothing and everything else, I did it with my normal method, which was with the flesh texture and shading, it was really important to get each shape in there. There are a lot of shapes here to consider, such as the lips and stuff, of like, especially on the tragedy side, the way the mouth is contorted and really just getting the idea of those lips in there. And then you have the sort of rounded horn thing that they've got on their heads. You have the idea that that is a 3D shape and not just flat. And each strand of flesh and string needs to have a bit of 3Dness to it. So I mostly did that by just putting a sort of darker tone in between where they intersect and then the lighter tone goes up the strand that is stretching out. Really simple way of doing 3D stuff there, but it works quite well. With this texture and shading, I really lean into the 3D shapes here. This is a sort of design that could look quite flat if you weren't careful with it. And so I was being very careful with it. <laughs> Every sort of bump and dent and stuff, I was making sure to try and make that really visible. I just wanted this guy to look as sort of uncanny and body horror like and realistic as possible. Made his eyes quite bloodshot as well because, I mean, he's probably in a hell of a lot of pain right now, so. <laughs> and also sort of these small beady eyes that are bloodshot, it's quite creepy. I guess. I mean, imagine those just staring at you in the darkness. Like, no thanks. No thanks. <laughs> on the inside of the torn apart area, I made these ridges because I was looking into making it seem a bit like a mouth. And obviously in your mouth, your gums, you have sort of almost layers and ridges on your gums. So that's sort of what I was going for there. Like I said earlier, I almost added teeth, but I thought it'd be way too busy if I did that. But once that was done, I started adding the strings of flesh going in between. Again, I was quite random with it, just not really thinking about which parts are going to connect, just doing it as I went. Some of the strands I was made saliva, but I thought the blood just worked way better. And then just went back and added some thicker parts, like coagulated parts, and parts where it sort of concentrated it's dripping down. Because it was a bit boring otherwise, really. And then the final thing to do was the last bit of shading. Just a couple of overlay layers, just add in a bit more depth and stuff. And after all that was done, well, here he is. There you go, you can all stop screaming at me now. Part three has happened, are you happy? <laughs> This part we had Sheriff Toaster, the Purple Kangaroo, and Butterhole. <laughs> Let me know guys down below which one is your favourite of this video. In terms of horror, I personally like Butterhole's design the best. I just said Bitter Giggle like 10 times and I couldn't say the sentence if I was saying Bitter Giggle so I'm just calling him Butterhole now, okay? Because I could say Butterhole, <laughs> but I can't say Bitter Giggle for some reason. See? See, I can't do it. <laughs> Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want another part, then do leave a like, comment down below. Let me know what characters you want to see me do. If this video gets enough likes, then maybe I will do a part four we'll see so hit that like button if you want to see it maybe while you're at it consider subscribing i'd really appreciate it click that bell for notifications of when i upload and i will see you all in the next video love you guys bye